Hello critters, welcome to today's 3D print. I can't do a live stream today. Things have gotten a little weird around here and away from here. Um, my sister's uh, doctor's appointment got changed from yesterday to today and we can't reschedule it for fear that um, if they decide to shut down, she won't be able to get the appointment at all. So um, we're doing it, and we also have one tomorrow as well. So I figured get these done before they all start locking down and doing crazy stuff. Understandable to some extent, but you know we have a very elderly community around here. Um, so I'm going to do a little quickie for you here. Um, my sister in Tennessee is in bad shape. So after I'm done my sister's doctor's appointment, I've got to go on a bit of a stalking raid <laughs> I gotta try to find some ramen noodle soup <laughs> the um basically my sister lives with her husband their friend and my mother in Tennessee so they got four people um, renting a house in Tennessee an apartment house whatever you call it it's a it's, it's, they're renting well they just lost 75% of their income as of effective tomorrow because three of them work at AMC Theaters. And AMC Theaters has decided to completely shut down operations nationwide for two to three months. That means no income for two to three months. That means no rent payment for two to three months. <laughs> well, they still have the rent payment, they just can't pay it. Um, so it's kind of um, really freaking crazy. This is the, I was never worried about the virus. My concern was the financial impact that this would have on people if things started shutting down. I mean, you're already having millions of people displaced in the entertainment industry. You know, musicians, artists, independent contractors. These are all people who are losing their jobs, losing their incomes, and they can't claim unemployment. <laughs> Only normal W-2s can claim unemployment. If you're an independent contractor, no unemployment for you. If you're self-employed, no unemployment for you. You know, my... um. My associate, my Amazon affiliate income has dropped to almost a zero. I made two dollars yesterday. <laughs> so people aren't ordering, and there's less available to order because Amazon is prioritizing their stream for medical and food supplies, which makes sense. But that also means even I'm not safe working from home. Um, I mean, I'm fine for the next three months because it's a three-month lag time in payments. But in you know two and a half months, it's going to get very real here. <laughs> So the problem I'm having is that I can't help my sister. I'm fine here, but I can't help her. I mean, I can't send her money. I don't make enough money. Uh, I barely make enough to pay my bills here. And um, I got tons of food. But, I mean, if I were to send her a month's worth of food, it'd probably cost me $200 in shipping. I don't got it. I did manage to grab some oatmeal, instant oatmeal, which is great for breakfast. I have a lot of instant oatmeal. That cabinet up here right there is filled with it I got enough for probably six months <laughs> but um, I scored um, 248 packs so that's 96 packs of oatmeal for 25 bucks so that was prime shipped to her yesterday but I forgot how wonderful one day shipping is for Amazon <laughs> so they got that now so now they have one month of breakfast for all four of them um, combined with the, what they have they had like five boxes um, we're trying to reduce her bills as much as possible, so she's going to call the phone and cable and internet company and see if there's anything she could do to partially suspend services, um, reduce trade services during this problem. Uh, she's gonna call the landlord, explain the situation to them. Hopefully, they'll be understanding. We'll see. Um, she has two payments left on her car. I told her I'll put on a credit card if I have to, but um, call the company first, see if they'll work with you. The worst they can do is say no, right? They did. They give her a two month grace. She only has two payments left. That's probably why they only give her two months. <laughs> but so I told her if in two months you're still not working, then we'll just pay off the car on my credit card. It's only like four or five hundred bucks. And um, I trust her. She's one of the few family members left I have that I trust implicitly. Like, no question, she'll take care of everything. Um, so that removes $400 burden from their income. Um, I'm getting ready to send her out some light bulbs. She's going to get me a list of the kind of light bulbs she has because um, they only have a couple of LED bulbs, but they don't have all standard E27s. They're 
we have a couple of oddballs. So I'm going to get together an order for light bulbs for her because, hey, that could knock five, ten bucks a month off their electric bill. You know, if, it, if it's ten dollars, that's thirty dollars. You know, that thirty bucks will buy some food. Um, I told her to get her butt out there and raid all the Dollar Tree she can, try to find some ramen, but they're empty. Even our stores up here in Edgewood are empty. We have roving caravans of people from Albuquerque driving out here to the outskirts to clean out all the stores. They've cleaned out all the way out to, there's a convenience store gas station another 21 miles past me. So that's um 60 miles outside of Albuquerque. So basically these people are clearing out a 60 mile radius outside of Albuquerque. <laughs> So there's like nothing. Although they restocked the bread yesterday. You can see that on Life of the East. I posted a video of the of the local grocery store. Our Walmart is closed. They had a fire. They're hoping they're going to reopen today or tomorrow. And um, they just canceled my online order. So I guess they're not ready for it yet. But um, yeah, it's kind of crazy. I mean, I don't know what we're going to do. I mean, I'll, I'll be fine. But I don't know what I can do for her. Um, I believe Tennessee instituted um, immediate unemployment. Normally, there's a, a grace period between when you lose work and when you can get unemployment, and you basically lose that money, even though it counts against you. <laughs> yeah, unemployment's a little weird like that. But um, apparently, they've eliminated that, so she might be able to apply for unemployment and get it immediately. But I don't know if what she will get will be sufficient to pay rent, even with the cost-saving tactics we're implementing. I'm even looking to... Um, have her suspend her phones, except for one. Um, just suspend them for illness, and that's only ten bucks a month. So that'll save her another hundred bucks a month. Just keep one phone active, so whoever goes out has the one phone, and then everybody else uses Wi-Fi phones, like you know Google Voice or something like that. You know, just to reduce the um, impact on her monthly bill. She can't really cancel the internet and TV because if you're going to be stuck at home, you need some kind of communications and entertainment or you'll go freaking crazy. You know, they don't have a house with an acre of property like I do where they can do other stuff. <laughs> you know, so they, they kind of need entertainment, you know, play some Warcraft or something like that. But um, I'm also worried about her because she's the primary mover and goer there and she's a compromised individual. So most people don't, don't know that coronavirus is basically a mild flu okay for most people the um the problem is well first of all most people don't realize just how deadly the flu is how many people die from the flu every year you think it's just a regular sickness no people die from it. a lot of people die from it tens of thousands of people die from it every year um the difference with coronavirus however is that if you're over 50 your odds go up dramatically i'm talking like the curve looks something like this mortality and the flu looks something like this so the flu when you hit 50 it does this when coronavirus hits 50 it does this <laughs> it really spikes high so people who are older it's a real big danger its communicability is also higher so it's very very easy to pass it from person to person that's why they're shutting things down that's why they're trying to encourage social distancing because it's also, if you're a compromised individual, meaning if you have underlying health issues, it could be dramatically more lethal to you. So my sister is one of these individuals. She has very bad asthma, um, like really, really bad. Like it's a not like a just oh terrible bee there now and then. She has medication and inhalers and crap that she has to use. And um, well, guess what? Coronavirus attacks. It attacks the lungs. <laughs> so. Um, she has to be extra careful but that's it that's all you can do so i gotta run around to as many stores as i can today i mean i have plenty of food but now i've got to try to get as much food as i can you know lightweight compact stuff you know that's shelf stable and cheap because i don't have a lot of money um so that i can mail it to her you know if i could fill a a couple of um you know 18 dollar large flat rate boxes with ramen noodle that'd be great you know 30 bucks i can send her a month worth of food if I could find any stores that have any. <laughs> so far, well, Walmart, Amazon, Smith's, and Dollar Tree, none. They don't have any. I also know Moriarty's cleared out, so there's no point in going and checking the Moriarty store or the um, Dollar General, because I know they're both cleared out. Um, so I'm going to have to go into Albuquerque and see if anybody missed anything. <laughs> you know, just, just start driving around the different Walmarts and Albertsons and Dollar Trees and see if I can find something after Rochelle's appointment. So in the meantime, I've got about an hour before we have to leave for her doctor's appointment. So we're going to do a little something at Tinkercad. I figure, why not? I'm going to show you guys how to make 
<laughs> a little roll of toilet paper. In Tinkercad, I'm gonna. I actually opened an Etsy store finally. Right now, it only has one product. I have these using my new Orter Laser Master laser engraver. I am making these. So that's your official surviving the 2020 toilet paper apocalypse. Uh, your business card, you know, your certificate, you survived. <laughs> I also have a customization option, so you can put whatever you want on the back if you want. It's five, it's six bucks, five dollars plus a dollar shipping, another five bucks if you want me to customize the back. Um, if I have it, I can do it in other colors. I do have a couple of other colors, and I'm also working on doing it on wood. I have these little, sadly they're a little bit smaller than business cards, but I have these little wood cards as well. So that will be fun. And then once I get the, where'd it go? There. Once I get the necklaces in from Amazon, I'm going to add the toilet paper necklace. So I made these little, this is Filament One's gold filament, which is really beautiful. Put the little toilet paper roll, and I'm going to make a necklace out of it. So you can have a little toilet paper necklace. <laughs> Hey, if you don't make fun of this stuff, you'll go crazy, okay? So, I'm going to show you guys how to make this in Tinkercad. So, let's switch over to Monitor View. OBS is driving me crazy, by the way. It's just, oh. I tried to have one camera in two different <coughs> scenes with a different aspect ratio, and it won't do it. Like, now, th this camera works in this view, but it won't work in the other view. I don't know why. That's why it's a different camera when I go to here. It's a different camera because that camera won't work in this scene. But it works in this scene. I don't know why. <laughs> so I'm going to show you guys how to make a toilet paper roll. And if you haven't seen my Twitter, I am making a gigantic one. This one here? Yep. Yeah. That is a five day print using a little over four kilograms of plastic. And it is a gigantic toilet paper roll that will hold toilet paper rolls. Yeah, I, I ran this. Somebody, actually one of you guys suggested it to me saying, hey, can you make it hold toilet paper? I checked. Yes. It'll hold 20 rolls of toilet paper. It'll also act as a, a stool you can sit on and a step stool you can stand on in theory. Someone like me might not be able to stand on it, but a normal person who's not 400 pounds could probably stand on it. It's going to be very big, and it's all vase mode, and it's still taking four days and four kilograms to print that one part. Another day and a half a kilogram to print the other part. Um, the lid I already printed. So, um, yeah, that's going to be fun. I declare myself the toilet paper king. <laughs> because who else is crazy enough to print a four kilogram toilet paper roll? <laughs> probably not many people. So probably Friday that'll be done. Also, on Friday, I will be participating in a live stream with Luke Hatfield and possibly Edge of Tech. We're trying to organize that now, just a little live stream. We might simulcast it, so you might be able to see it here as well and also on their channels. We'll figure that out. They're using StreamYard or something like that. So that'll be fun. And um, also, tomorrow I have another Life of Nerese video coming for... I want to show you around inside Smith's, you know, using the, um, the video goggles that I use. I love these things. These video blasts are great. I just got to remember not to jerk my head around too quick because it's a little unsettling in the video. So let's get into Tinkercad and make a toilet paper roll. So first thing we're going to do is come over here and we're going to grab the tube option. We're going to drop a tube. First thing we're going to do is make it maximum size 64. Uh, we are going to make it taller. So let's make it, what, 30, I guess. We'll make a little one. And then radius, let's go 15, so 2 to 1. It looks about right. And then wall thickness, that just makes your center there thicker. There we go. That looks good enough for me. Okay, so that creates our basic toilet paper roll. Now, first thing I'm going to do is copy this. Control D, drag it over here. Use a shift key to keep it on the same plane. And this one here, we're going to make the wall thickness a whole lot thinner. That looks good to me. And then I'm going to make it a little bit shorter. I'll explain why in a moment. Let's go, I guess, two millimeters. I guess one millimeter is probably enough. Back to our original piece, we're going to add a bit of a bevel right there. And then we're going to increase the number of segments to maximum. This way you get a nice round edge. 
gives it a little softer look, looks more like a toilet paper roll. Okay. And we're, oddly enough, we're almost done. This really doesn't take a whole lot. So I'm going to change the color of this so that I can see how these parts mingle. Okay. Now we need to create the little toilet paper flap. Okay. So you have that little, oh, this one here. You have that little toilet paper flap there. So we got to make that. And that's why we made a duplicate of it. So that's the same arc and the same size, but a little shorter so it doesn't interfere with the curve, the beveled edge of the roll. The bottom is okay. We want that flat because we want it to be able to print. So you want it to be fully touching the surface of the um, thing. Well, the biggest reason that I... Um, ooh, sorry. The biggest reason... I just woke up at 8 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> um, it's the biggest reason to make it a little shorter so it doesn't break the beveled curve. And because I was making this with a removable lid when I upscaled it, so I didn't want the little tail on the lid. I wanted the lid just to be a circle so you could put it on any orientation. You don't have to line it up. But for yours, you don't have to make it shorter. So we kept the alignment. We're going to change our snap grid to off. That gives us the maximum resolution where we can move stuff. Grab the yellow part, shift key, slide it into the other part until the orange just pops through. Right there. See how the orange just popped through? Boom. So the orange just popped through. So now we have our integration of one surface into another. Now all we're going to do is we're going to grab a cut box. We're going to make the cut box taller than the yellow part. And then we're going to change the angle of it. See here? We want to cut off this half of the yellow box without cutting off the part that we want, the part that sticks out. Okay? So we have to bring this box right there. See? You want, to, you want to still see a little bit of the orange here. See how you can still see a little bit of the orange there? That means you're not going to remove anything of the yellow that's sticking out on this side of the box. And you can check the bottom. We look good. So now we're going to hold the shift key and select the yellow item and then hit merge. Boom. Now we have the toilet paper roll sticking out the side like that. Now all we do is grab another box, bring it down here. Make it as tall as the unit. Drop it a little bit so it erases everything. Make it as big as all the yellow. Oh, I'm hitting the bottom edge of the screen. And now we are going to rotate and put into whatever position we decide we like. Okay. I think that looks good there. And that looks pretty good right there. I think I like that. Highlight those two pieces. Merge. And there you go. Now we have a toilet paper roll with the toilet paper flap sticking out. Now if you want to make this really, really big like I did, see how this has an imaginary square going around it? That's the outline of the, the toilet paper roll itself, the outline of it, if it was a square. You want to try to keep this flap inside of that square. This way the flap doesn't reduce your XY limitation on how big you can make it. So when you're trying to make it as large as humanly possible like I did, that becomes important. So the flap on my big one is a much shorter little tail than the flap on the, um, the one like this, where you want the flap a little more pronounced. So it's obvious it's a toilet paper roll. That's it. We're done. We now take those two and merge them. We will change it to white so it actually looks like a toilet paper roll. And there you go. You now have a little toilet paper roll using two parts and a couple of cut boxes in Tinkercad. Actually, a duplication of the first part, so it's really just one part. And then you duplicate it and use that copy to make the second part. And there you go. You made a toilet paper roll. <laughs> uh, you can't wipe your butt with it, but <laughs> it's, it's, it's kind of cool. Some things you can do in Tinkercad. Um, you, there's already somebody who made a little toilet paper roll like this, and they put it in the hands of the little Yoda child. So the, instead of holding a bowl, he's holding a roll of toilet paper. That's cute. <laughs> Um, you know, that's basically it. Um, I made it this small because I'm going to make a necklace. I also have bigger ones. Like here's a, a slightly larger one just for shiggles. So there's a little larger one. It's the exact same file scaled up. Now the cool thing about this is that you can vase mode print this. Okay. And because it's only two surfaces, you only need to do one very simple cut and that cut doesn't even have to be visible. You can hide it inside the crack here. So if you look carefully, 
See how I got a little seam in there, right there? Yeah, see that? That little dark area? And then on the inside here, I have a seam. So this whole thing is printed in phase mode. That's cool. So here's how we're going to do that. So we have an object. It is 30 millimeters tall. We're going to want top and bottom layers that are going to be solid so that you don't see your, um, your cut seam. You want it to look nice. You could just cut right through it and let the seam go through the whole thing. So you could just put down your box, make it taller than the whole thing, make it 0 0.1, okay, and just cut straight through. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually leave the cut box where it is. I'm going to rotate the toilet paper roll. And you want to rotate it until that seam is behind there like that. Now, you can't cut your flap. So you also have to move this. What you do is you just move it until it doesn't cut the flap. See? It's cutting the toilet paper roll without cutting the flap. And I'm going to hide it a little more just because I can. Again, move it until it doesn't cut the flap. It only has to stick out of the tool paper roll just barely. That's it. You can do that, and you are now done. And this object will now print in vase mode. But we're a little more advanced than that. We're going to go a little nicer because we want that really nice concentric fill top layer that I have here. See how it's not broken at all? So we're going to make it nice. So here's what we're going to do. Back. Now we have this all positioned so we don't have to move anything. All we got to do is resize and shift this. So this is 30 millimeters. Let's say you want to do um, four bottom and four top to make this thing a little stout. You want to make it a little rigid. Okay. So that means we need 0 0.8 millimeters. Top and bottom, we need 1.6 millimeters. This is 30 millimeters. So subtract one from that. Or you subtract the 1.6. That would be... 28.4 yes 28.4 so we select our box here 28.4 and then we raise it we grab our little cone here just like that grab the cone here's our offset 0 0.8 there now we are 0 0.8 off the bottom and 0 0.8 away from the top because we made it 1.6 shorter the other advantage of doing this is here you remove the curved section from the equation when you're doing the vase mode. That means a cleaner print, and that's going to be important. Okay? Now we join and cut. There you go. Now we have a little slot that's hidden behind the flap that's cut into the object. And um, now that's another reason why you might want to make this flap taller so that you get the entire thing. If you're not going to... Um, do what I did and make the um, this into a box, then you want to leave this at 30. So we're going to change the height of the little flap to 30. Actually, we're going to make it a hair shorter, 29.9, because we want a 29.95, because we don't want it. You want it to just see how it's just barely penetrating the top surface there. You can just see the outline. That's That's what you want so that it doesn't stick out the top of the roll, okay? That's it, rejoin these two parts, join, rejoin our slot, change it back to white, watch your mouth please, and uh, there you go. Now your flap will have top layers, because if you don't do that, your flap won't have top layers, your, your flap will be open and you don't want that, and you also don't want to break vase mode. All right, that's it. We're done. So this is Epic Lottie Bojo. We're going to save that. Epic Lottie Bojo. Now we come into here, open containing folder. We open up Simplify 3D because we're all inclusive on today's 3D print. So I'm going to show you how to slice it. There we go. That's my big one. That's my big behemoth monster right there. So you can see how I made that flap stay with inside the boundaries of the square here. That allows me to print it at my full 400. This is um, 395 by 395 millimeters by 445 millimeters. So it's as big as I can possibly make it on this printer um, without going to a larger printer. But as you can see, that does allow me to fit five silos that should fit any size toilet paper roll. And it will fit between 16 and 20 rolls depending on how tall the rolls are. So the Scott 1000 I use should fit 20. 
but even 16 rolls, I'm okay with that. <laughs> so, uh, what? ICBTP, Intercontinental Ballistic Toilet Paper Shooter. <laughs> it's like five little missile silos to shoot toilet paper at the scalpers. So, anyway, file new. We are going to use a regular printer. So, let's do this on the Mega Zero. Mega Zero, yes. And then we grab our Epic Lottie Bojo, drop that in there, and here is our toilet paper roll. Now, we already know the dimensions we need. Let me make sure I clear out any oddities from here. Three, three, two perimeters. Uh, let's go three perimeters just because um, 0.92 extrusion multiplier is proper on this printer with the 0.5 millimeter nozzle. Actually, I think the 0.9 works. Okay, now what we're going to do is go to Tools and go to Variable Settings Wizard. Now we know our first deviation is the 0.8 millimeters for the bottom layers versus the vase mode portion of the print. So we're going to add location. It's 30 millimeters tall. We need to be 0.8 millimeters below that. So that is 29.2 millimeters, 29.2. Add location. Split process. Now we have our three processes. Um, Simplify 3D, if you're watching this, this is where I would like to be able to click on this process and have the grid planes show up on the model to show me where I'm actually working. So this is the first 0.8 millimeters. This is the main body, the vase mode. And the third one here is the top layers. So process one, we are our standard 0.9 millimeters. Uh, we're going to put um, four top and bottom layers with the three perimeters. Now our top layer, same thing, four top and bottom layers, three perimeters. This is all at 0.2 millimeters. Now our center section is different. We're going to change the extrusion multiplier to 1.2, so we're going to print a fat wall. By printing a fat wall, we make this a lot thicker, so it's not going to bend. This is vase mode, but you can see it's, it's, I'm sorry, it's pretty resilient, okay, because I made the walls nice and thick. Same with this. I print the walls at a higher extrusion multiplier, so they're nice and thick. So extrusion multiplier 1.2. Layers, we're going to change that to zero top, zero bottom, and one perimeter in single outline corkscrew printing mode, vase mode. Hit OK. Now our basic print is done, but we do have one problem. Okay, so there it is. That is our basic print. As you can see, it is in vase mode except for the top and bottom layers. But there's a problem here. Here's a little trick for you. So here is your vase mode, and then boom, it goes to three perimeters with top layers. Well, that's not going to work very well, or four perimeters, with top, or three perimeters with four top layers. That's not going to work very well. And the reason it's not going to work very well is that you're jumping from a single perimeter to three perimeters. Now, you could print outside in, and that might work, but these two perimeters here, the two yellow ones, have nothing underneath them. Because underneath them is just air. It's a vase mode print. So there's a trick here that we need to do. Uh, you'll, it's a little bit of trial and error. So basically, go to your calculator. We know this is 30 millimeters tall, and we know this layer right here is 28.8 or 29.2 millimeters. So type in 29.2 divided by 0.2. That means I have 146 layers at this point right here. So what I'm going to do in the slicer is I'm going to go to my vase mode option here I'm going to go to I think it's a infill yes infill I'm going to include a solid diaphragm at 146 I might have to adjust that one or two, one up or down we're going to test that in a moment now if I chose the right height I might be off by one I might need to use 145 nope we're good so now here's the top of the vase mode and boom it closes the top of the vase mode without adding extra perimeters. On a part this size, that will bridge just fine. Don't worry about it. Okay. So now it bridges and closes off the top of the vase mode so that when I tell it to do my solid layers with the perimeters for strength, it now has something underneath it to support it. See how that works? So now there's actually something there to support those extra perimeters to make it really nice. Now, if you want to make a really clean toilet paper roll, there's another trick you can use. We're going to take that top layer, and we're going to split the top layer again. 
and we're going to split it at 29.8. Add location split. Now this is going to be a separate process for the last 0.2 millimeters, the top layer, because this is a toilet paper roll, which means it's toilet paper wrapping around a roll. And you notice how I have that nice, I don't know if you can see that, there you go. See how I have that nice concentric infill? So instead of the infill going back and forth, the infill is circles. So it looks like a rolled toilet paper, okay? So the way you do that is you go to infill and where it says external fill pattern, you change that to concentric. Print, select all, okay, and there you go, see? Now my top layer here has that nice concentric infill so it looks like a toilet paper roll, but concentric infill is horrible at filling in an open space. So below that is standard infill that crisscrosses back and forth, which gives me good bridging and good strength. So I have my vase mode to make the project very smooth, very clean, no zit line because it's vase mode, very strong because we're over extruding, very fast because we're using vase mode. Now, uh, after the vase mode, it closes the top, which permits, that's using the solid diaphragm option, and then that permits our three perimeters and crisscross infill to have something to actually sit on top of, which is very good. We want that. Uh, I keep looking at this one. I need to look at this one. <laughs> so that permits us to have that um, crisscross infill we want. And then for cosmetic reasons, we have that final layer that has concentric infill. So we get that really nice, clean concentric infill that looks like um, a toilet paper roll. Now, if you have a very good... Now, my bottom layer is pretty much smudged together so there's nothing there see how you can't see layer lines but i don't have elephant's foot okay now if you are using a fatter nozzle or if you're printing slowly on glass or pei and you're able to basically drop the filament onto the bed so you can actually see the layer lines you can do the first you can do the same thing for the first layer if you want so we select process one tools variable 0 0.2 millimeters split process oh i have to add it first add location Split process and we do the same thing we take this first layer and we change the external fill pattern to concentric and that should give us the same result on the bottom where our first layer as you can see there our first layer is concentric but then we switch to back and forth which is what we want because the back and forth is stronger the back and forth is much much stronger and it bridges much much better um, you only really want to use concentric for the externally visible layers because concentric is just not very strong, but it looks pretty. Now, if concentric is sitting on top of normal layers, it's just as strong as anything else. And then we have our vase mode beginning. And then we have closing off the top of the vase mode using the calculator to figure out what layer that is and adding a solid diaphragm at the top of the vase mode process, which gives us a floor for which our back and forth and multi-perimeter fill can attach to. And then we have our cosmetic concentric top. And that's how you can use, um, you can see here I have um, five processes to handle all this. But the result is you end up with a highly optimized, very strong, very good looking print that's also very fast um, the timer is actually pretty accurate for vase mode prints so this should take 38 minutes to print not bad not bad at all mine are down to like 32 minutes i think i only have three top and bottom layers instead of four you can adjust that simply by adjusting your cut tool offset to account for however many layers you want um, that's it that's pretty cool so there you go you can now make your own little you know, 2020 toilet paper apocalypse, toilet paper rolls on your 3D printer. <laughs> um, I, I, I do not claim any copyright to the idea of a toilet paper. And there's already a hundred other people who've already done the virtually exact same thing. So if you want to make these and go and sell them or do whatever you want with them, go for it. Um, I, I think I already posted the Thingiverse. Yes, I did post it in Thingiverse. So I will have a link down below for that. I will also have a link to my Etsy store. So if you wish to purchase one of my um, business cards here, my 2020 Toilet Paper Apocalypse Survivor member cards, <laughs> uh, they're five bucks plus a dollar shipping if you don't mind them shipping in an envelope. 
Um, I will put a piece of foam board inside the envelope to increase the odds of survival. So it should be only about a buck to ship that. If you're overseas, I put down $2 and I'm hoping that's enough. I'll find out the first time I ship one overseas. Um, if you pay $4, I will grab a random box that I have here in the house somewhere. Uh, the, um, the, the U.S. Post Office charges me $4 to ship one of these anywhere in the country, it seems. That's like a default rate, I guess. It's the lowest they have. It doesn't go lower. Um, so what I'll do is I'll stick it inside one of these to increase the chances of not being damaged. Uh, but if you're okay with the risk of a piece of foam board in an envelope, it's only a buck to ship. And then if you want to customize the back, that's another five bucks. So you can pick that option for custom back. And then what you'll have to do is you'll have to email me um, what you want. Um, actually, I should be able to enable personalization. So if you only want text, you should be able to put it in the order. So just remember, um, don't be vulgar. You know, you know. I'll, if you want to put curses on here, I'll do it. But if you send me something racist or something illegal or something that's just going to be bad for other people, I'm just going to choose not to do it. <laughs> uh, so keep it clean. You know, if you want to you know, use curse words, that's fine. But don't do any racist crap. Um, but yeah, I can customize the back. And if you email me a black and white line art image, I can put a, an image on here. But it has to be black and white line art. Like that. I keep looking at the wrong camera. That's one problem with multi-camera setups is you don't know which one to look at. <laughs> uh, but I can customize the back for you. And then by Friday, I hope, if Amazon comes through with the necklaces that I ordered, I will have the toilet paper roll necklaces that I printed right here in my house. Um, it'll be like dog chain necklace, you know, ball and chain necklace. And um, they'll be um, $10 plus uh, I have probably $4 shipping because I can't ship these in an envelope. You only get the envelope rate if it can actually pass through a reader. So it has to be flat. This won't be flat. I have little pillow box packaging that I ordered. Um, so I'll be able to put it in that and it'll be four bucks shipping. So 14 bucks and you can have yourself a toilet paper apocalypse necklace. <laughs> and uh, by the way, I'm getting ready to buy a tremendous amount of toilet paper. I'm hoping to. Like a couple hundred dollars worth. See, I already have like 200 rolls of toilet paper. I didn't buy any during this um fiasco this is all toilet paper i brought with me from home from pennsylvania I actually had over 300 rolls but my family started stealing it so i had to lock it away in the bus i'm very cheap regarding toilet paper i don't like paying a lot of money for something that i i don't like paying money for something that i'm explicitly buying to throw away and you buy toilet paper for the purpose of throwing it away <laughs> if it wasn't so disgusting i'd probably use you know personal cloths instead of toilet paper but that's just disgusting i'd rather buy the toilet paper but I'm working on a bidet so I can buy less toilet paper, but I got to figure out a way of heating the water affordably, um, you know, without bringing it from the hot water heater because then you got to sit there and run the water for five minutes to get the damn water to come out hot. But um, if you ever squirt yourself down there with cold water, you know what I mean. <laughs> um, but I'm getting ready to buy like, like a five-year supply of toilet paper. I'm going to buy a, like two or 300 rolls of toilet paper. You're like, don't do that. Oh, yes, yes, I'm doing that. Okay. I'm going to wait until after this whole fiasco passes. And then all these morons who bought five and six hundred rolls of toilet paper and they realized the apocalypse didn't happen, the end of the world didn't happen, and now they're stuck with all this toilet paper and they're going to be looking to get rid of it to clear out their house. Yeah. I'm going to make them squirm as I walk up after their Craigslist listing and smile because I'm about to haggle you down to half what you paid for that toilet paper. <laughs> Karma, bitch. Karma. Yeah, it's going to come back to get you. I'm telling all my neighbors the same thing. I was like, wait. Wait until after this passes and all these chumps have all this extra toilet paper that they're going to try to get rid of because it's filling their garage of their house and their basement. And I was like, and I'm going to buy it at half what they paid for it. Yeah, I'm going to have myself a lifetime supply of toilet paper. I'm going to pay almost nothing.